This shot isn't staged at all. That point again? Yeah. As we sail to another Greek island. Where are we going to Copenhagen? As we sail to Kia, it'll be our 12th destination in 10 days. It has been a big couple of weeks. And to be honest, by this point, we are all pooped. We probably should have slowed down a bit and smelt the roses, but there are 6,000 islands here in Greece and life is short. Visiting all of them for one day would take 16 years. No one has time for that, especially if your dream is to sail the world. While we're out here sailing, I asked you guys on Instagram if you had any questions for us. And one of your questions was, what was it that pushed us over the edge? What was it that made us buy a boat and start this sailing life? COVID, like many of us around the world, was definitely the tipping points that made us evaluate what was important to us. Made us realize how short this time on earth really is and we really should make the most of it because just in an instant, just like that, things can go horribly wrong and our worlds can be turned upside down. Hey guys, hey guys. So during the COVID pandemic in Australia, we were in Melbourne. John wasn't able to fly as the whole aviation sector ground to a halt. And that was enough to push John and I over the edge. He was stood down from his job. Yeah. Yes, we were going crazy in lockdown. And I was working my butt off, reporting on some pretty horrific stories. A lot of people weren't fans of the media in that stage. Morale was pretty low. Are you from the news? You better put that on the news. This is Everyone was doing it really tough. And you know, in that moment, it was like, stuff it. So I resigned from my job. We still contemplated coming to Europe at that stage, but we decided to sail in Australia instead. Ideally, we were looking for a 40 to 45 foot boat and our budget was around $150,000 to $200,000, but stock was so scarce. We ended up spending around $100,000 over our budget just to get into the market. We realized we had to spend more money in order to get a boat that was seaworthy so that we could get cracking with our adventure. I'm steering away from the original question a little bit, but I've never Never shared this next story with you. The process of buying a boat almost stopped us in our tracks, especially when we spent a fortune flying into state to look at this vessel that ended up being riddled with wood rot. We were heartbroken because the agent told us it wasn't as bad as it really was just to get us there to look at the boat in person. It cost us two days, four flights and a thousand dollars later and we were no closer to buying a boat. But as you guys know, we ended up finding our dream boat, Takana. So if you're new here, go back and watch all our episodes from the beginning. Some of you guys might be asking, where is Takana? We'll be continuing our journey along the Great Barrier Reef from next week onwards. So make sure you're subscribed and have your alerts on so you don't miss any of our upcoming episodes. We cannot wait to take you to some of the most remote islands down under. For now though, we're in Greece, so let's explore Kia before the most epic sail back to Athens. And then we'll end this episode with a Q&A. So stick around for that. It basically opened our eyes a little bit to what, what sailing can offer. We are definitely gonna be trying to work out how we can get here sooner rather than later. The world had more of your smile. What if the wind could spread? Let's just quickly get our bearings though. We're aiming for Kia and we've had some decent wind today. So we've managed to sail most of the way. Today was a really big journey. Done about 35 miles today. And we're just on the northern side of Kia. We're not sure if the anchorage is gonna be a bit rolly because the winds are so strong. So we're just gonna poke our nose in check it out see what it's like we've chosen kia because it's on the way back to athens where we need to drop our boat back to navigate yachting and time is also ticking because strong winds are forecast so we've chosen to med more in this protected bay if I want, yeah i'm going to swing the ass in yeah, yeah. Like the other boats here, we're reversing in while dropping the anchor at the same time, which will hold the bow in place. Start dropping it? Yeah, yeah, well, you can probably start dropping it now. Your, your line's critical, Chris. Yeah, I know. I'm not sure why my line wasn't sorted out. We were so tired by this back point. To the cleat, back to the cleat. Yeah. What do you do? I, I can let it back. How much have you ended up paying for the birth? 13 and a half euro. 20 bucks. That's pretty good. In Australia, it's like $100 a night. Beautiful little place. Oh, wow, that is shallow. We've got it. How close are the rudders? Uh, do you want me to have a look? Yeah. Like, as in, put the camera underwater? No, just with the eyeballs. The fall is coming. I can't.
Good morning. Just had a beautiful sleep. Let's go and see how John's doing. P.S. I'm wearing his shorts. How'd you sleep? Pretty good. We made Maud and it was really smooth last night, wasn't it? And we had the uh, shore power plugged in and the aircon on, climate control. Uh, I should come it. in, should I? No, it's fine. I'll show you the thing. So it comes out of here and you can run the generator if you're not on shore. I'm still a little sleepy. Dad, uh, takes the edge off, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Funny because we've got these quilts out. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah, she just have too many. We've just been storing them on the end of the bed. But... We're going to make some plans today, don't we? Gonna let the sun shine in. So welcome to our intimate team meeting. Um, in the morning, it'll be a northerly. It's north and then it goes a little bit northwest, but it's only like 10 knots. We should actually be on a beam reach going out of here, around the bottom, and then we might be like close reach. It's seven hours back to Athens, by the way, back to the marina. We ended up unanimously deciding on the following. Right, so we spent all day here, chilling out, got up for dinner again tonight, whatever. Yeah. And then tomorrow morning, we'll get up early, maybe depart at 5 a.m. We'll be back in Athens by midday. Perfect. Here was cute and quaint, but it wasn't my favorite island. I feel like one day here is perfect. There are plenty of restaurants to choose from, nice little shops and beaches. Gorgeous. It's convenient too because it is so close to Athens. So let's fast forward to 5 a.m. and get cracking to Athens. So for our very last sail, um, we've gotten up early. It's not actually a sail because there's absolutely zero wind. So I think it's going to be more of a motoring sort of morning. Lights are on. Very picturesque. We've just slipped from our mid morning. So we'll see how the day progresses. Trying to explain what life was like before knowing how to sail feels so claustrophobic. It's a really difficult thing to explain how our world has changed over this last 12 months and this is the only way I can explain it. So hear me out. I feel like I see the world from a whole new perspective. Not only being able to explore it by land, yeah, the bloody hell. Come on. by foot, by public transport or by car, but now I'm able to explore it by sea. It's just opened up so many doors, so many avenues of exploration. And that's what blows my mind. It is a whole nother mode of transport that is right there and it allows us to unlock the keys to the world. Oh my gosh. But there is so much fear surrounding it. So many of my friends and family thought John and I were crazy for pursuing this adventure, for going out and buying a boat with absolutely zero experience. And I get it. I get it. This actually makes me feel a bit sick. But had we listened to all those people, we would have missed out on this experience. Can you only imagine? Yeah, I did. They said that just one look and I'd get caught. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, it's good. We didn't think we we're going to be out of sail today because there was essentially no wind when we woke up this morning. But it's come out to play. So good. Grease, you sexy son of a gun. And the wind just kept on increasing for us. We were healing, baby. Place. All the little knobs on the doors. Everything hurry. I gotta have a look at probably the faster. Oh, nothing's really gone anywhere in here. Might just leave that knob though. Oh, hang on. Oh crap, all my makeup. 
Lining up this Greek island adventure on Cascade was all very last minute, and we only gave Chris 48 hours notice. Keen as mustard to join the crew though, he tied his boat onto a mooring back in Australia, and he flew halfway around the world on three flights to join us. Hey! <laughs> How you doing? And had to leave his baby boy, Hank, with the local coffee shop owner who's been sending constant updates. Meanwhile, Hank is living it up. Those people who don't know Hank, can you please tell us, Chris? Hank goes my little French bulldog mate, and he's currently in Early Beach being pampered like the lord he is. He's nice. He's definitely not thinking about Dad right now. <laughs> about the sail right now. <laughs> it's backed. <gasps> On our very last day, we got to sail yeah. and see dolphins. Oh my gosh. Am I recording? So here we are back at uh, Agios Cosmas Marina, just out of Athens. We've just finished our 10 day sailing experience. This is what we wanted to do right at the yeah. beginning, isn't it? Yeah, this so is when exactly we what we wanted to do. So when we started our year off, we were supposed to come to Greece and buy a boat and sail here. Yeah, and then COVID happened, and then we obviously purchased a partner in Australia, but yeah, this was our dream. And it was amazing, hey, like some concerns I had about sailing in the Med were, is it going to be expensive to moor the boats? Am I going to be okay sailing a boat that I'm unfamiliar in, given that we'd only sailed to Kana, that's the only boat that we'd ever sailed? Also, how's it going to go with navigating over here, and the rules, and the weather being different, and the anchorages being different, and the Med mooring? But actually, it is all very, very straightforward. They give you a thorough briefing. The boats are all in really great condition, which is it makes it really enjoyable because you just all you do is just turn up, have an awesome time, and then just hand the boat back and walk away, and they take care of everything. Yeah, absolutely. And it was way cheaper than what we were anticipating. Like med mooring, all these different islands were a few euro. Some were seven euro, others were yeah. twelve euro, and that included power and water. In Australia, it is way more expensive, and you have to book in advance. Whereas here, you literally just show up it's if there's a spot. way more relaxed. You just turn up, and if there's a spot, you park, you yeah. turn your anchor, and everything's fine. Some differences between sailing here in Australia, in terms of like enjoyment, is everything is so close. So like 20, so close. all the islands are like roughly 15, 20 miles apart. Yeah. And with, so within a couple of hours, you're on a completely different island. Yeah. Um, with different things to see, and 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 the cool thing is, is like you can literally drop your anchor, reverse up to a town key throw the line, step off your boat, walk across the road, and you're in a taverna eating amazing Greek food, drinking good wine, seafood, yeah. and, it's, and it's very cheap. And then you literally walk a few paces back and you're back on your boat. Yeah. It's so cool. And the anchorages here as well are just so calm. So they're calm. They're just, they're, they have the Meltemi winds, which we didn't, we, we, didn't, we yeah. avoided that, yeah. so like, which is amazing. Mostly it was just really calm, which yeah. is so relaxing because you could anchor in close to other boats and not be stressed about hitting them because it was just a zero wind. I yeah. know the tides are like non-existent, so like you don't have to worry. 20 centimeter tides, as opposed to what four meter tides in Australia? Well, depending on where you are, yeah, you can yeah. have up to 11 meters or something like that. So, and which meant there were little, very little currents, no it's swell. No swell. Uh, it was just really, really enjoyable. Another thing you're talking about are the distances between the islands. In 10 days, we were able to knock off like eight different spots, and it was just so easy. It was so easy, and you'd literally you'd wake up. You have an awesome morning, you have something to eat, go have a coffee, yep. go to the bakery, walk around, you know, clean up the boat a little bit. How did then you, you not get fat? <laughs> you, John, we were literally in a bakery every single day and John didn't get fat. The food is amazing and it's so cheap. Really one great thing as well that I um, enjoyed about this experience is that we did one big provision at the start of the trip. So we, you know, spent about $500 on groceries, it's 500 Australian, and that lasted us all the way through to the end of the trip. So we had breakfast and lunch covered every single day. And then for the evenings, we'd go out to Tavernas all together. And I, I see. think- But it wasn't a problem because every single island has pretty much everything. There's supermarkets everywhere. Yeah, it's fuel, true. You can get fuel everywhere, water That's everywhere. True. It's, it's just, everything's really easy. They organize everything here for you too. If you need to do groceries, there's a little van that yes. picks you up, takes you to the supermarket. Yes. Um, or you can order online. I think they give you a link to a website yep. and it can all just be sitting here waiting yep. on the dock for you. I thought it would be really complicated and, and kind of like, and I was like, oh, I don't want to deal with all that Same. on my holidays, but it just, it's so seamless. Yeah, it's amazing. It was great. Okay. So sorry. I just wanted to say, yes. um, talking about like who should charter a boat, because we actually had never chartered a boat at all. No. Um, the reason we didn't do it was because we didn't have the experience 
and we thought it was going to be really expensive but what we've since realized is that even though you do need to have a, an ICC, which is an International Certificate of Competence. It's a mouthful. <laughs> yeah, um, or, and you've got to have a VHF uh, operator's license as well to be able to skip a boat in the med. If you don't have that, it's cheap to hire a skipper. If you want to sail and you've got a group of mates mm. and you don't have the ICC, mm. you can still sail. They're just there with a ticket, keeping an eye on things, whatever. And if you split it, if you had a few mates and you split it, Definitely. it'd be like, under a thousand dollars each but they have so many different boats here like the whole marina they've got more than 300 around the world by the way 300 yeah and i think 11 locations 11 locations they also gave us the there's a code discount code yeah so if you guys do want to take advantage of that uh, you can get 200 dollars off your next trip uh just use takana in the promo code and yeah thanks navigate for looking after our our viewers and looking after you guys yeah so can I, I just want to talk a little bit more about now for the technical side. I didn't think the charter boats came with this sort of equipment this boat has. Three zone air conditioner, a generator, bow thruster, dishwasher, a really good navigation system. Yeah, like teak decks, in-mast furling, the sails are new. Like I learned a heap sailing a different boat and like seeing yeah. the design differences between this boat and our boat. Yeah, hopefully you guys can experience what we just have because it's really changed our, it's, it's, it's basically opened our eyes a little bit to what, yes. what sailing can offer. Yeah, we had a really great experience and we are definitely going to be trying to work out how we can get here sooner rather than later. Time to go, time to say goodbye. You purchased too much stuff, John. Holiday mode. Yeah, <laughs> all right join us next week as we sail australia and a huge thank you to our patrons for your support always <laughs> let me heal it makes me feel like we're going for